turned Way into up. Angela, but I call her Ye. <laughs> Hey, way up, way up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. I'm here with Jasmine from the Jasmine Brands. Good morning, Angela. Good morning. We're out here in sunny Detroit. <laughs> not not sunny Detroit. No, it's been raining. <laughs> <laughs> the rain is coming down in Detroit. I know. Um, but still happy to be here. Yep. A shout out to everybody. We're at WJLB in Detroit, and we had a mixer. We did. Yesterday with everybody from the station, with some of the clients. Mm -hmm. Now, we had a good time. We had a time. And then we went to go eat at this restaurant called Mad Nice. Mm. And it was Mad Nice. It was Mad, mad Nice was Mad Nice. <laughs> so we enjoyed that Italian food. I think it just opened like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. It really, it, I don't know what Detroit vibes are, but it gives me like Miami vibes inside there or something. It was cool. It's huge. Yeah. Um, um, also, shout out to Pencil Lewis College. Yes. We were there yesterday doing an event with PepsiCo. And these students, they're design students. When I tell you the designs that they were coming up with were ridiculous. Super impressive. The, and also, the uh, campus is beautiful. Yes. And so, shout out to them. I mean... First of all, it's a it's an HBCU. Mm -hmm. It's the only HBCU in the United States that yes. actually is focused on arts. Yes. And so it was three different teams of students, and they were designing what's going to be a PepsiCo student lounge. Okay. And it's going to be unveiled in July, and Russell Westbrook is actually going to come in for the unveil. Can we come back and see it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, we're having a good time. I feel like we are packed. Like, my schedule, I left the hotel, haven't been back there. I wasn't back there all day until it was time to go to sleep. It was, yeah, it was an action-packed day. And then and we have another action-packed day, I feel like. Yes, we're going to be with Mary Sheffield today. She's going to be running for mayor of Detroit. Nice. And so we're going to make sure that we get behind her. But she's having a dinner tonight for Women's History Month. Okay. This is the last day of Women's History Month, by the way. I know. I'm kind of sad. But it's going to continue on. So. Okay. We're are you going to continue to do a segment on what, uh, yes. women every day? I'm, I'm feeling it. Maybe it'll be, we're, we're going to figure it out. Okay. Because it might <laughs> be like, a I don't want, I don't want to commit yet. Yeah, because it might be a weekly segment. It mm. might be something special where we interview somebody. Okay. You know, once a week. I think I would like that to have actual, the person come in and actually talk. Okay. All right. Also, Jabari Banks is going to be joining us today yes. from Bel Air. He plays Will Smith's character. Yes. He's actually from Philly. And I actually watch that show. You do watch that show. All right. So we got a lot going on. But of course, it is time to shine a light on them. And we have so many lights we want to shine. Y'all will get to hear <laughs> the drama that we went through to make it to Detroit on time. But 800-292-5150 is the number. Y'all know it's all about you. So if you want to shine a light on somebody doing something positive, show some love, shout them out. It is 800-292-5150. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm going to shine. Turn your lights on, y'all. Turn your lights on. Spreading love to those who are doing greatness. Shine a light on them. Shine a light on them. It's time to shine a light on them. Hey, shine a light on them. 800-292-5150. Whoever you want to shine a light on, call us up. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is here. Happy Friday, Angela. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it is Friday. Mm -hmm. And I know Antoine's in the car listening. We just Ubered over here. We're in Detroit in the studio out here. Hey, Antoine. Hey, Antoine. <laughs> he was so pleasant today. But we want to shine a light on Anthony. Mm -hmm. When I tell you guys, it was a mission to make our flight. First of all, we were stuck in traffic for almost two hours hours yes trying to get to the airport we had to fly out of jfk mm -hmm. typically how long does it take to get to the airport if there's no traffic maybe like 30 minutes okay so because two hours go ahead <laughs> right so i didn't anticipate that and we got to the airport late yes and you know you need an hour and i definitely had a bag to check mm -hmm. and so say we missed it by five minutes the cutoff yes so they wouldn't let us check our bags mm -hmm. and they told us we had to get on another flight the next flight wouldn't be until the morning right so i had a breakdown <laughs> but a quiet one. Yeah, like you, were, you were you were still pleasant. Yeah, because you know what? People always have an option of not helping you. Yes. And so one woman didn't help us, but the guy who was uh, in charge of baggage, he did help us. We actually took our huge bags. I'm going to post a picture of it <laughs> uh -huh. to the gate. The, our bags were huge. And so I had to go through the belt. And shout out to Anthony, mm -hmm. who when uh, the, his supervisor was trying to tell us no, 
we can't do it. We had to go back and get out and miss our flight. He felt bad, and he was like, well, we don't want you to miss your flight. And right. he actually worked it out where he put it through another belt for us to make it. And he did not have to do that. Thank you, Anthony. At TSA. So. It, just to give you guys a, a reference point, the bag was huge. So the bag wouldn't even go th on top of in the bin to make it through the actual you know, machine that reviews it. All right. Well, it's time for you guys to shine a light. 800-292-5150. Marcus, who do you want to shine a light on? I want to shine the light on God today. Okay. For the spirits and the soul and the children lost, the families who are suffering. And we all need to know that God is in charge. God has done major works in my life. Okay. I just want to let everybody know that I'm a firm believer in God, and God is always in charge no matter what. God is good all the time. Thank you. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. We want to shine a light on God, too. Thank you. Good morning. Shine a light on him. Who you want to shine a light on? Your host was shaking. I want to shine a light on my wife and my six children. Okay. Your wife and six children? Yeah. Okay. Y'all was getting busy. You know that early. Look, we've been together since we was 15 and 16. We got six beautiful children. I got a 10-year-old, a 9-year-old. My twins just turned seven, hey, well, eight yesterday. I got a seven-year-old and a six-year-old. We get to that, and we the family. And I'm from Brooklyn, you are? Okay, Brooklyn. Hold it down in Brooklyn with your wife and six That's kids. I know y'all love each other. Good morning. Shine a light on them. Who you want to shine a light on? I want to shine a light on my little brother, Keon Hot. Okay. I want to shine a light on Bro because... Yeah, a magnificent person. Anytime the family need him, be there for us. Be the best brother in the world. And what's your name? And I trade him. My name Kenny Hop. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't trade him for nothing in the world. I just want to shine a light on you, bro. Let you know, man, you always thought about. you the best, boy. Okay, you the best. All right, well, that was Shine a Light on him. 800-292-5150 is the number. And when we come back, we have Yee T. And you know, Lotto got her own radio show, and she wants people to actually let her know, hey, what could I be doing better? She's got more interviews to do, but we'll talk about the first interview she did with Chloe Bailey. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Way Up. Just like to talk like they Angela Yee, like they Angela Yee. Man, she's spilling it all. This is Yee T. Way Up. Yes, it's way up with Angela Yee. I'm here. Jasmine from the Jasmine Brand is here. And by here, we mean in Detroit. <laughs> we, we're in Detroit, yes. Yeah, shout out to everybody listening on WJLB in the D. Mm -hmm. And shout out to Lotto. She has her radio show now, 777 Radio. Okay. And we got to hear her first interview with Chloe Bailey. They dropped this yesterday. Mm -hmm. And um, it was pretty cool to hear her doing this. Now, what I like is that she wants feedback. She went on Twitter mm -hmm. and she said, how can I be a better host? Like, for real, I have still have some episodes to film so i'd love to hear some constructive criticism from people who actually watched listen to the episode and then uh somebody said listen more without interrupting the guests even if it's to agree i feel like you cut chloe off a lot to either agree with her or add your own story and she said lmao was so funny as i said this to myself too lol i agree noted okay i like how she asked for feedback yeah, she did. Mm -hmm. And it was good. I like it. that you know, And she cares. And yeah. she's still filming episodes. She also said that she and her DJ curate the music you hear on the episodes, too. Mm -hmm. So it's actually what she's really listening to. Oh, good. So if you want to hear, here's what she had to say when she um, when Chloe Bailey was asked about those rumors that she was dating Quavo. Here's what she said. The T was that she was talking to Quavo. Uh-oh. Well, we doing a movie together. But they were saying that John was hanging out. Uh-oh. Who said that? I don't know. Why the hell would you say that? I don't know where that came from. Hello? Yeah, working. <laughs> yes. Flirt working. Working. He's a really nice guy. I mean, he got dreads. Yeah, you I like, like dreads. his locks. I like his locks. Yeah. <laughs> Sidebar, she may actually like guys with locks. Because remember, she was allegedly dating Gunna, who has yeah. locks. Oh, yep. And her boyfriend is DDG. Here's what she had to say about DDG. So, how do you feel about DDG? You like him for your sister? What's good? Because I, I mean, be like, oh, sorry, protective over my sister. Listen, like, I am like, so protective. You ain't going to do uh -uh. Uh -uh. I am so protective of my sister. Yeah. But As seeing how happy she is, I'm happy. Yeah. You know? I feel like that's how my sister is. I told him I had my eye on him. I said, you should. I said, you with her, I'm you, killing you. As you should. I told him that. He knows. Don't leave evidence, though. You know. But, yeah, she happy. <laughs> she's happy. So, as long as she's happy, I'm happy. Sorry, y'all. I messed that all the way up. It's okay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I just started a whole new rumor. She you did. I'm like, sister's boyfriend. I'm like, wait a minute. Let me uh, st- let me post that on the Jasmine brand. I love uh, how no. protective she is over her sister, though. And they are protective over each other. You're right. To You're be right. clear. Yeah. And Chloe and Lana also talked about their own insecurities and people just talking crazy about them because, you know, that's not easy. Right. Yeah. All of our insecurities get heightened. Yes. Because even things oh we weren't God. insecure about, people will poke on. Yeah. And like me looking old. You don't look old. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> so now That's my whole crazy. thing is, I'm, I'm going to say this without saying no names, but yeah. I'd be like, no, Key, I look like, <laughs> uh, Key, I look crazy. like old. Oh. White woman. <laughs> I can't, but that's the things that be going through our head. It is, and, and it's all because of social media, though. Yes. I feel like that's a really real moment. Yeah. No, it is. It's true for her to be able to address that, but also be able to laugh about it. But sometimes on the wrong day, you want to just be like, <laughs> spray everybody up. <laughs> you want to be like, STFU. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, now, Megan, the Stallion threw the ceremonial first pitch at the Houston Astros opening day game. Okay. So that was amazing. The announcer said that she was doing a great job while she was practicing. Okay. She was practicing beneath the stadium just a few minutes ago and was throwing strikes. So here we go. If she gets set to throw. <laughs> she did good, but you know she did better than fifty. She, <laughs> that's a good point. Can I, can we say she looks amazing? Listen, that was the main thing though. People watched her walking up to that plate, like, okay, she looks happy too, right? Yeah, she's been looking good in her pictures mm-hmm. and looking good on video, and she's ready to perform. She actually has a show today, so okay. that's going to be a big deal. It's the NCAA March Madness Music Festival. Okay, um, taking over the weekend, and she's going to be hitting the stage for that. So, okay. shout out to Megan The Stallion, showing her much love. Okay, she's also going to be starring alongside Adam Sandler in a movie. Yeah. Yes, I can't wait to see that. So there's not a lot of specifics about what that's uh, going to be about, but that should be fun. Okay. Right? And that is your YT, all about the ladies. Yep. And when we come back, we have about last night. And when I tell you last night was <laughs> 18 hours long, it feels like. No. But let's talk about what went down last night. We had some fun things to discuss because, again, we are in the D-800-292-5150 is a number. Remember, you can always call and leave a message, all right? If you can't get through, you can do it anytime, even when we're not on the air. It's way up with Angela Yee. Last night. So, about last night. Last night. Last night. Here's how it went down. All right, it is Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm here, and Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is here with me. Thank God it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday, and we are in Detroit. By the way, I love Detroit. You know that, though. This is your second home, so it's uh, it makes sense that you love Detroit so much. And I got an opportunity yesterday. Uh, you know, I'm buying a building out here mm-hmm. in Midtown, which I'm excited about, but I'm even more excited after just going to Midtown yesterday, eating in that area, just seeing how much... It's happening there. It just makes you feel good. It's active in that area. Yeah. Wayne State University is right there. There's restaurants right Mm -hmm. there. It's even hard to park. Which is a good sign. Yeah, it's a good sign. So a lot of times, you know, you invest in things and you're wondering like, okay, am I doing the right thing? Because you always are going to feel like that. You're absolutely doing the right thing, FYI. But I think you know that. (laughs) And I think Jasmine's going to invest too. I am going to invest too, yes. All right. Well... Uh, But I was telling you guys earlier that we did have a lot of issues trying to make it to Detroit. Yes. Just being late for the flight. Not to our own fault, though, because we really did give it almost two hours. Which is a lot. For a ride that should should be less than 45 minutes. Correct. And unfortunately, due to traffic and all those things, and our driver did not seem to be in a rush (laughs) at all, um, we did not make it in time to check our bags. And they tried to tell us we could throw our bags away. (laughs) Yes. That was a suggestion. I forgot. I was like, no. (laughs) I looked at you (laughs) like. They did suggest like we should throw our bags away. I said, I'm not going to do that. Then they said we could come back the next morning and catch the flight. Mm -hmm. But what I do want to stress, and I was saying this to Jasmine, because even though I was stressed out and she was being quiet because she was watching what I was doing. (laughs) Right. What is Angela about to do? (laughs) Right. It is important in those circumstances to still be pleasant. Yes. Right. Because a lot of times people can choose to help you or they can choose not to help you. Mm -hmm. Now, some people did choose to not help us. They did. (laughs) But fortunately, you know, I still was like trying to figure out a solution because I'm a very solution uh, oriented person. You are. And so I was just like, okay, well, we can do it. And I think people see your energy. You know, the the uh, man who was in charge of, of baggage, and we didn't get his name. Right. I know. Too bad. 
But he was watching the whole thing and he was trying to offer suggestions. She was shutting him down. She was like, no, I'm not overriding anything. I'm not doing anything. And I could tell that he wanted to help. He did want to help. And you so could tell when, his face. So when I moved over to the side to try to figure out a solution, I was like, okay, we might just have to cancel these flights, buy a flight on another airline. There's a later flight going out. Yeah. Um, he walked over to us and was like, come on, just go check it at the gate. Yes. And so that was a nice thing to do. And then even when we got there, they tried to shut us down. Again. Uh, again. <laughs> Um, while we're going through TSA and fortunately you know there was somebody there I don't want to get him in trouble so maybe we won't yeah but he, he told us his name yeah. so he, he showed us his name tag and, but, and I do know that there's times that I know people that have had to do this before so that's why I knew it was possible to take your bags to the gate and check them because the they big did, bags yeah big bags because they did put it through the security and so uh, Anthony again you saved our lives thank you so much Anthony at JFK at Delta yeah but um, my whole point is that even under pressure at times like that just be pleasant to people yeah and if they don't want to help you just take a beat mm -hmm. and see if somebody else will and I, I know that people like to match people's energy but in these kind of situations you cannot match other people's energy because people were not being pleasant to us, mm -hmm. but you still were remaining calm and people will help you when you're more nice and you're not going off on them because the situation isn't going your way. Because so. I have definitely been in situations with other people where they curse people out. Yes. And they just start going ham and you're like, uh, yeah, let's take it down a notch because now they're definitely not going to help us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I've been in that situation many times when other people have actually ruined the situation with Girl, their attitude. Yeah. So my whole point is you also don't know what anybody else is go has going on in their life. And I know that's a popular phrase, but it's true. Mm -hmm. And so you don't know if somebody's having the worst day, whatever they're dealing with. Right. And so for you to just take a beat. I did try to compliment the woman, but she <laughs> You did. It didn't help. <laughs> But anyway, that is our About Last Night, and that's just some advice for that. And when we come back, we have Tell Us a Secret. That's when you guys call in, and you'll have got some doozies <laughs> on here. 800-292-5150 is the number. Call us up. Tell us a secret. And remember, it's always anonymous. Mm -hmm. We are not judging you. No, we're not. 800-292-5150 <laughs> is way up with Angela Yee. This is a judgment-free zone. Tell us a secret. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee, and I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is here. Good morning. Hey, Jasmine. And um, it's time for Tell Us a Secret, 800-292-5150. Again, this is always anonymous, mm -hmm. so we don't know who you are, and we are not going to judge you. Um, I've been in love with this dude that I've been messing with since I had my son, my first child, and he's, like, so gentle and passionate and stuff. Like, I've never experienced that before. And I don't really know how to tell him that I'm in love with him. Ooh. And, I, and he, he wants to move to New Orleans. And New Orleans, but move. without you. No, I mean, he wants to move because he feels like Virginia doesn't have like enough opportunities and stuff here. Okay. But I want him to stay because I'm in love with him. And oh. <laughs> you do. All right. So, I mean, you know, our intuition be a little on point. Do you feel like he's in love with you or cares about you that way? Yes, but it's just like. The financial part in Virginia is like the career fair that he's in. It's not like lucrative out here. Like, mm. so you're gonna go with him or? I want to, but this... I've been in Virginia my whole life. <laughs> I, I mean, what do you have to lose if you tell him? Right. Um, I know. I'm scared he might be like, oh no, I'm not in love with you like that. And wouldn't you and rather? I don't know. I just don't like being let down. You rather know though, right? <laughs> Yeah, I kind of, yeah. Cause and then the, I, have a, he, I have a son, he has a son, so it's like... Because the best case messed, scenario, like, he's like, I'm in love with you too, let's give it a try. Worst case scenario is he's not, and then you know you got to move on. And also, what if you, you don't want to live with what, what ifs? Like, you don't want to be like, what if I would have said something? What if I would have told him how I really felt? What you if know? he starts dating somebody else because you never said nothing? Right. I'm going to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that made me sick. Oh. <laughs> I'm just saying, it could happen because you never spoke up. Mm -hmm. But we're not here to judge or tell you what to do. We're just here to listen. I told him I loved him on Valentine's Day. And he told me he loved me too, but I told him like in a sketchy way. Like, I love you because I, you know, like you're a really good dad. And not like I'm in love with you, like the depth of it. Like, I'm I'm really in love with him. Like, Are you going to tell him? Are you going to tell him? Before he leaves, I'm going to just be like, you know, I'm here. <laughs> And I really do love you, but, you know, if you got to go, you got to go. All right, that does not no, sound very No, you need definitive. more direct than that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, he's probably going to be like, all right, okay, that, does not, that does not sound like you're in love. See, it's just dating thing. In 2023, everybody's all messed up. I don't want to 
put myself out there and get shut down. And it's like, no dudes really want relationships no more. They just want to F that's and leave. A, so it's like, that's a lie. And hey, there's nothing wrong with being honest. Sometimes uh, people try to hide things, and that's how you miss out when you're not honest. All right, Angela Yee, I'm going to be honest. They didn't take the way out. Okay, okay. Gonna be, <laughs> I told the truth. Keep us posted. This is supposed to be uh, tell us a secret. All right, good luck. All right, you have a good one. Bye. Bye. Hello, anonymous caller. Tell us a secret. Hey, um, I was working at this job when I was about 19, and I ended up messing with a mom. She got fired, and her daughter came on to me. But the daughter was engaged to this guy that was actually working there, and I messed with the sister of the engaged guy also. Oh, okay, gosh. so you messed with the sister of the engaged guy. Yes, and the mom of the her. And the mom. Yeah. Did you get anybody? Was the mom fired because of you? Yeah, and they brought me back. They fired both of us, and then they brought me back. How did y'all get caught? Yeah. Um, I was young and dumb, and I told one of my friends at work, Oh, and they and told the they hate snitched. For her was, yeah, they snitched. The hate for her was more than the love she had for me. But they brought me back, so it was no, it was no bad blood. Wow. Yeah. How, who, how was who was the sex better with? Um, probably the daughter. Okay, okay that's good. All Less right. experience, but yeah, All right, that's good to know. <laughs> that's life. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for sharing. No problem. All right, anonymous caller, tell us a secret. Hi. Hi. Hello. What's your secret? Okay, so my secret is that my husband, I've been married for 20 years, and my husband says that he wanted to spice things up a little bit, you okay. know, in the bedroom. So he said that he wanted to try something new. He wanted me to, you know, have sexual intercourse with another guy while he watched. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Okay. So I did, and I enjoyed it so much that now I have a full-on relationship with the guy that I had sex with. You, you're, does your husband know? No. He, oh. no. he doesn't know that you guys are having a relationship. No. Okay. Okay. And um, what's the plan? Just to keep it going like that? I have no clue. I didn't intend this. He actually introduced the situation. And obviously, I have way too much fun with it. Mm. And uh, Okay. That's why. See? Be careful yeah. what you open the door for. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you yeah. for sharing. Good luck. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, that was Tell Us a Secret, and y'all definitely <laughs> delivered again. Um, are the City Girls up or down? Uh, up, I think, after that. Okay, City Girls up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Again, that's 800-292-5150. You can still leave us a message and tell your secret in case you didn't make it through. And when we come back, we have a Yee Tea, and we'll be talking about 6 9 So the men accused of assaulting him have been arrested. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Yo, she about to blow the lid up off this pot. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Angela's spilling that yee tea. Come and get the tea. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm here. And Jasmine, and by the way, the Jasmine brand is where a lot of these stories come from. Yes, I'm here too. Thank you, Angela. No problem. And let's get into this Yee Tea. Okay. So three men who were accused of assaulting 6 9 and we all saw it on camera. We did. They were all arrested in Florida on Thursday. Now, according to the Associated Press... Uh, they said that 43-year-old Rafael Medina Jr., Octavius Medina, who's 23, and Anthony Maldonado, 25, are in custody. Okay. They were booked uh, Thursday night. 6 9 was taken to the hospital with injuries to his jaw, ribs, and back. And you can see in one clip um, that his face is all bloody and he's yelling, y'all N-words jumped me. He was attacked in the sauna by these guys who beat him up. Whew. I guess Rafael and Octavius are related? Yeah, it feels like... Mm, I mean, I don't know, but... Okay. I would guess so, cause when, but he's a junior, then Octavius, yeah. Maybe that's his son. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure. All right. All right, but yes, I mean, and, uh, you know, 6 9 still acting like he has no problem going places without... Uh, God, God bless him. Yeah. All right, now, BT, congratulations to The Breakfast Club. They are going to be aired on BT, and that's going to be weekdays starting at 9 a.m., and that starts on April 17th. And that's a big deal. Here's what they had to say when they made their huge announcement. Being that this is like this is Breakfast Club 2.0, yes, right? Because the show has grown and evolved. Correct. Right? It's only right that the, that the evolution is televised, right? Absolutely. The evolution will be televised. So are you saying that the Breakfast Club each and every morning will be televised on television again? Yes, we will. And it will be in all the cable networks? All across the world. All across the country? 9 a.m. 
every single morning, Monday through Friday. You can listen to The Breakfast Club on our new home. Say it again. Say it. Say it. On B-E-T. Yeah, Angela, I remember you, when you were on the show, I remember you telling me about this. So I, f- I almost forgot about it until I saw the announcement again. I remember when we um, when they first started approaching the Breakfast Club about doing this deal with BET. I was like, all right, I know I'm leaving, but nobody knew. Right, yeah. This, yes. is, this is great, though. Yeah, that's going to be good. And listen, I saw uh, people were acting like I was punching the air. <laughs> no, <laughs> trust me, I am very happy. Like, I'm happy for everybody, but we're still on the same station. The Breakfast Club is going to do amazing. Their show comes on right before mine and most of the market. If we're in the same market, I come on right after them. Right. So it is definitely a blessing for everybody. So shout out to them and shout out to BT. Y'all still family. Yeah, we're mm-hmm. still here. We're in the same building on Literally. the same floor. But I will say, and I know for some people it's scary to like branch out and do your own thing. Right. But this is a true blessing. All right. And let's talk about Yo Gotti. I mean, um, well, he has nothing to do with this, but at his restaurant, unfortunately, um, two people were killed and at least five others were injured. That's Pre Bay Restaurant in Memphis. Okay. One man was found dead in the parking lot and the other passed away at a hospital. Uh, police say that four other men and one woman also were hit with bullets. All of them were driven in private vehicles to hospitals for treatments. Mm-hmm. We don't know what their condition is. Okay. Uh, Yo Gotti was not even in Memphis last night, so I know that he does own the restaurant and it makes it a, a bigger story because it's his restaurant. Right. But the main thing here is that people were injured and people were killed, and that is a tragedy. Super tragedy. And, you know, there's footage out of the brawl that led up to everything, so we want to continue to send our condolences to everyone affected by this. This is super sad. And I see a lot of people speculating over what started the argument mm-hmm. and what happened and so I don't like to report those things without confirmation of course um, so you can see all of that online but yes it's and the real tragedy is that people were killed and yep. people were injured so we do want to give our condolences to everybody who was affected uh, by that tragic situation yes all right and Kanye West and his Yeezy brand now they have been sued from a former employee Yeesh. now this woman uh, Dora is saying that they owe her two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars she was hired to be the director of product innovation okay and then uh, she also says Kanye convinced her to quit her role at Adidas and work for him full-time she was promised a severance payment if she was fired without cause she said it was never paid to her when she was let go in December of 2021 and she doesn't believe Kanye or his company ever intended to follow through on this severance package and only dangled it to get her to leave Adidas Ooh. all right so yet another issue and that is your yt and when we come back we have under the radar those are the stories that are not necessarily headline news stories but we feel like you need to know them anyway it's way up with angela yee yeah. news this is the news that relates to you these stories are flying under the radar yes it is way up with angela yee i'm here and jasmine from the jasmine brand is here happy friday angela happy friday from detroit <laughs> you know shout out to everybody in the d everybody listening on wjlb what is it? What up, though? Is that what up, though? Okay, what up, though? <laughs> All right. I wonder if we sound like tourists. Probably. All right. Now, um, this is under the radar. These are stories that are flying under the radar okay. that you may not have heard about, but we feel like you should know. Mm-hmm. Um, let's start with Spike Lee. Okay. So, if you've seen the movie Crooklyn, and we- you know I'm from Brooklyn, so I've seen that a million times. Okay. So the Bedside Brownstone that was fe- featured in Crooklyn, and that's a semi autobiographical movie for Spike Lee. Mm-hmm. That house sold for. $4.15 million on Friday. That is setting a local record. Wow, and that's in Brooklyn. Yes, that's in Brooklyn, in Bed-Stuy, which that's, is, by the way, where I live. Yeah, you love Brooklyn, and you love Bed-Stuy even more. Now, the record um, for uh, valuation, because what that means is it's 3,600 square feet of living space. Okay. So that means that it's a valuation of about $1,153 per square foot, which is really high. Yeah, that sounds very expensive. So now this is breaking a record. The record was previously held by another property, which sold for $1,031 per square foot just last year. Hmm. All right. So this house was built in 1899. And it's four bedrooms, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's crazy. Hmm. Sheesh. Actually, that house has been for sale for a while. I used to see it listed all the time. I'm like, that's a lot of money. Did you they... ever look at it, Angela? No, because it was listed for $4.5 million. <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to buy that. Okay. All right. <laughs> but I do like to just look at things sometimes. But I love, you know, that I, when I do look at it, I think of Crooklyn. So. Yeah. And so that's nice. I wonder who bought it. Hmm. All right. Now let's talk about some more news. This isn't necessarily under the radar. Okay. But we're just trying to keep you guys updated with what's happening with Donald Trump Mm -hmm. and Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg. He has now defended his office's decision to indict Donald Trump. 
He sent a letter to Republican lawmakers today uh, rejecting the Republican accusations of political persecution, persecution as baseless and inflammatory. Okay. Uh, according to Leslie Dubeck, who is Alvin Bragg's general counsel, that conclusion is misleading and meritless. This letter was sent after Alvin Bragg's office acknowledged it had issued the first ever indictment of a former president. Congrats to Donald Trump for being the first person, first president, former president to be indicted. He's making history. Yes, he's making history. When is he going to surrender? Is it? They said Tuesday. Okay. Is when they anticipate that he will surrender. Now, the indictment is still under seal until that happens. Okay. But, you know, again, uh, the Republicans have been attacking right now. Mm -hmm. A lot of Donald Trump's allies have been attacking the Manhattan DA. They said it's a political witch hunt. Okay. Trump himself has asked for people to protest in the street. Oh. And now Alvin Bragg is saying, look, like any other defendant, Mr. Trump is entitled to challenge these charges in court and avail himself of all processes and protections that New York State's robust criminal procedure affords. What neither Mr. Trump nor Congress may do is interfere with the ordinary course of proceedings in New York State. Okay. All right. And they're also pleading with Capitol Hill Republicans to encourage calm and said to stop engaging in unlawful political interference. Uh-oh. All right, stop with these inflammatory accusations, withdraw your demand for information, and let the criminal justice process proceed without unlawful political interference. So instead of denouncing, um, instead of uh, doing that, they should denounce these attacks and urge respect for the fairness of our justice system and for the work of the impartial grand jury. Okay, social media was going crazy yesterday after this news. Yes, indeed. Okay, well, that is your Under the Radar story. Now, you know we still have the Way Up Mix coming at the top of the hour. And you know on a Friday, it's always live. Yes, it is. So, let's get ready. And Jasmine loves to do her little Jasmine bop. I have one bop, and I do it faithfully. Yeah, so she is a yeah. bopper. <laughs> All right. Also, we do have Jabari <laughs> Banks joining us. He is Will Smith on Bel Air. We okay. have a great show for you guys. So make sure y'all keep on listening. We are out here live from Detroit on Way Up with Angela Yee. And we are having a time. What up, though? Oh, did you bring our drinks? I did not. I did not. Uh, I wasn't even going to bring it up. I thought we was having happy hour up here today. We have happy hour after the show, Angela. Where is Chris Carson and Sharon? Everybody up here. I thought we was giving everybody drinks. Sorry, guys. All right. Well, it is Way Up with Angela Yee. It's Friday. Get ready for that. Way up mix at the top of the hour. They say it's truth in the room. Ah! From industry shade to all the gossip. Talk to me. Angela's spilling that yee tea. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm here, Angela Yee, and Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is here. I'm here. You can see a lot of these stories on the Jasmine brand, by the way. Yes. All right, let's get the Yee Tea going. Steph Curry has signed a new long-term agreement with Under Armour. Okay. And let me tell you something. Y'all know I done bought Under Armour stock a long time ago and watched it go down, down, down. So I see it's already going up a little bit now. You so were very excited about this news. Because I actually like Under Armour clothes. Okay. Um, so Curry first signed with Under Armour in 2013 and launched his Curry brand in 2020. And so he'll have the title of President of Curry Brand. He'll get additional resources to grow his brand as well. So shout out to Steph Curry for that. Okay. All right. Um, and by the way, um, the growth potential of the stock that he got and expected annual compensation could see him earn more from the Under Armour extension than from his NBA contracts, which will total more than $473 million. That's crazy. Through the 20. 25 to 26 mm -hmm. season that's insane i don't okay. even i can't even fathom that number all right all well right. one day you <laughs> fathom it okay all right now a lawyer who is representing jonathan majors has shared what she says are screenshots of text messages between jonathan majors and the woman originally alleged to have been the victim in his recent assault arrest now she shared these text messages but i see a lot of people are saying these text messages are doing more harm than good yeah these weren't really helpful yeah, so some of what it says, uh, please let me know you're okay when you get this. They assured me that you won't be charged. They said they had to arrest you as protocol when they saw the injuries on me and they knew we had a fight. I'm so angry that they did and I'm sorry you're in this position. We'll make sure nothing happens about this. I told them it was my fault for trying to grab your phone. I only got, I only just got out of the hospital. Just call me when you're out. I love you. She said, they just called again to check on me, and I reiterated how this was not an attack, and they do not have my blessing on any charges being placed. I read the paper they gave me about strangulation, and I said, point blank, this did not occur and should be removed immediately. The judge is definitely going to be told this. And people are saying this is not helpful to him. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, she was in the hospital. She had marks she's on her. she's also blaming herself. That's a, that's true. That's a very for a fight that went down where she and she's saying if I just wouldn't have grabbed your phone, none of this would happen. Very victim like. 
Yeah, so Eesh. I don't know if I would have put those out. But. Yeah, probably not a good idea. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know what? I do want to say this. I know it's really difficult to go up against somebody who's a major celebrity. Yes. Because no matter what, people are going to think that it was your you're fault. in the wrong. Yeah. And then I know I see a lot of men, you know, just being like, yeah, she's wrong. She did. Why would she do this? Why would she do that? We don't know the whole situation. We don't. I also see a lot of women yeah. taking his side as well. But right. that's neither here nor there. All right, now it's also Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. So it's time for new music. Let's talk about some new albums out today. Okay. Chloe has a new album called In Pieces, and here is her song with Future. How ironic. like that okay. and here he is featuring Nipsey Hussle G media for Nipsey Hussle. She wrote a post and she said, I hold my breath all of March knowing I have to face the memory of the day you transition. Holding on to ancient wisdom, but the pain is the pain and nothing was ever the same. Eternal being, I love you. That is so sweet. Yeah. Shout out to Lauren London. Mm-hmm. And, and I know she's still going through it. Much love always to Nipsey Hussle. Yes. Also, Tyler, the creator has an album out. Call me if you get lost the estate sale. All right. I love me some Tyler, the creator. Me too. Yes. He's different. <laughs> <laughs> and he's fun. He's but a, he's but also time. talented. Yes. I like yes. when people have good pers- personalities to go with their talent. Yes. Um, also, new singles out today. Quavo, Honey Bun, Not Awake, and Little Baby. Hot Boy, Rod Wave, Fight the Feeling. Marshmallow featuring Polo G and Southside. Grown Man, Moray, and Little TJ, High Price. And Reason, at it again. Reason from TDE. He's going to be coming up to weigh up with Angela Yee soon, too. Oh, nice. Way. Okay. All right. And that is your Yee T. And when we come back, we have Women's History Month. We'll tell you who we are celebrating. One of them is from Detroit because it's only right we're in Detroit. And we're going to see her later tonight as well. But again, this is the last day of Women's History Month. Okay. And I think this has to be somehow an ongoing feature. So we're going to figure out exactly what that's going to look like because we need to celebrate us every day. Yes. And for the guys out there who love us and support us, we appreciate you so much. And we love y'all, too. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. When they ask what you bring to the table, tell them you brought the table. Way Up with Angela Yee. Celebrating the ladies during Women's History Month. All right. It is Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm here. And Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is well. Yes. And it is Women's History Month, the last day, guys. I know. On I'm a kinda, Friday. I'm kind of sad. And, yeah, I am, too. But we're going to keep it going. Okay. It's not like it stops. Okay. It don't stop. It doesn't stop. And you know we're in Detroit, and so I do want to make sure that this Women's History Month, we end it on the high Okay. with Mary Sheffield. Now, Mary Sheffield is the president of the Detroit City Council. Okay. And in 2013, she actually made history. She was the youngest person ever elected to, to Detroit City Council. Oh. And now she's the city's youngest council president. Mm. So she's made history two times by the way. Okay. Um, And she also has passed historic legislation. She's helped with that. Okay. Including the inclusionary housing ordinance that mandates some housing is allocated to low-income Detroiters. Okay. She's really big on making sure that people get home ownership and have a path to that. Mm -hmm. Uh, She also uh, helped pass historic legislation like the Right to Counsel Ordinance, which provides free legal counsel to low-income residents facing eviction and the establishment of a reparations task force. Ooh. Yeah, so I love that. I was looking at her Twitter, too. Too, just to see like some of the things she's been talking about lately. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing she posted was about the city of Detroit announcing a down payment assistance program that assists Detroiters in, generation, in generating ownership and generational wealth 
It's allocated on a first come first serve basis. So make sure that you go and view your eligibility requirements. They also are hosting at her office a workshop series at senior buildings around renters rights with Detroit People's Platform. So if you're a senior or you know of a senior building that could benefit, she's like, please comment or um, you can always hit her up. And she's very much out and about. Okay, and we're going to see her tonight, right? Yeah, she's um, actually going to be doing a dinner for Women's History Month. But she has said, and I, I looked at what they said, she's a 40 under 40 person uh, for Cranes. And her quote in here is, I'm a walking testimony that if there's a vision or a purpose over your life, the provisions are there for you. I believe that oftentimes we count ourselves out or we second guess ourselves, especially women in leadership. You may not see the full picture or understand how it's all going to come together. But if the vision is there and it's aligned with your purpose, the provisions are there too. You just have to trust the process. Nice. And by the way, just putting it out there, I hear that she is going to be running for mayor. Okay. Um, so when we're ready for that to start, we're here for you, Mary Sheffield. Yes, for sure. All right. Now, Jasmine, I know you want to honor someone, too, for Women's History Month. The last day. Yes. For the last day, I want to honor a poet, author, and teacher named Gwendolyn Brooks. You're familiar with Gwendolyn Brooks, right, of Angela? Of course. Okay. So she was actually born in Topeka, but she was raised on the south side of Chicago. So she claimed Chicago. <laughs> and she was known around the world for using poetry to increase understanding about black culture in America. And a really cool thing about her her is she won the Pulitzer for Poetry on May 1st, 1950, and this made her the first African-American to receive a Pulitzer Prize. Ooh, that's a huge deal, too. That's a really big deal. Now, she began writing at an early age, and her first poem was published in American Childhood when she was just 13. So she graduated from high school in 1935, and at that point, she was already regularly writing for the Chicago Defender. Um, and I also wanted to add one of my favorite quotes from Gwendolyn Brooks is we are each other's magnitude and bond. Don't let anyone call you a minority if you're black or Hispanic or belong to some other ethnic group. You're not less than anybody else. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love celebrating Women's History Month with you. Yeah. And the people that we get to um, to talk about. And we also get to learn. I learn a lot. Yeah. That's what I'm about to say. I learn a lot because we're always doing research. Like, okay, who is this? Okay, do people know about this? And then we learn all these cool facts about them too. So, All right. Well, that is for Women's History Month. So shout out to everybody who we've been honoring. And we're going to keep this going. So. Okay. I already have some good ideas on how we're going to make that happen. Now, again, you know, it is a Friday. We mm -hmm. do got interviews coming up. We got Ask Ye on the way. 800-292-5150 is a number if you have any questions. Also, Jabari Banks is going to be joining us. He is Will Smith on Bel Air. So let's do it. It's Way Up with Angela Ye. I'm Dan and Way Up with Angela Ye. Um, you had something that you were talking to me about. You were like, what do you be arguing about with your man? Yeah, and you said nothing. But I didn't say nothing. I just said, um, go ahead and, and list the, the, what <laughs> so, you had. So I did a fake deep dive to, to see what people are arguing about in their relationships. And this is the five most common things couples argue about. Number one, sex. What you like, how often you have it, and what it means to each of you. Number two, money. How you think about it, how you manage it, and what you spend it on. Number three, children, whether to have them, have that. <laughs> whether to have, have them, how to raise them, what to teach them and how to discipline them. Number four, in-laws and family, how much they're involved in your life, how you interact with them and the value of their opinions on your decisions. And the last one is chores. Who does what around the house, how chores are done and when they're done. Do you argue about any of these things, Angela? Um, Not really. I mean, I think in the past, like... If we weren't aligned sexually or not having enough sex, I feel like it was indicative of another issue in the relationship. Right. So I don't know that that's anything I've ever argued about. I don't have kids. Right. And I've never argued about whether or not to have them. Okay. Either. Well, I think money could be a really... I, I feel like money should have been number one, but sex was number one. So. I, and you know what? I've kind of always kept my finances separate. Mm, okay. You know, so I think that's not anything... I know. You know what? Maybe it's because I've just not married or something i don't know <laughs> i don't know because who knows because if you were married or when you get married if you decide to get married you might still have the same sort of thinking in terms of keeping your finances separate and maybe that would make money less of an issue to me it might be chores because i do get annoyed by little things like i remember arguing like yo oh my god you've got to pick your stuff up off the floor because i also am big on like cleaning yeah and cleaning is a, a way for me to feel like i hate when my house is messy i can't relax yeah. And so when I'm always cleaning and the other person is like not holding up their end or mm -hmm. messing things up and not caring, mm -hmm. that might make me have an argument. Okay. Yeah. When something is cleaner, it makes me feel less anxious, but I'm not as clean as any as you.
Like, guys, you got to put the toilet seat up when you go pee. And don't just pee all over the seat. You know, guys. Oh, and, they, and they'll yeah. do that, especially, like, in the middle of the night when oh, they get up to use the bathroom. Yeah. And they don't turn the light on. And then they pee. And then you come in and you're like, why is there dried up urine on the seat? Do you keep Things your, like that bother me. I put the toilet seat down all the time. Yeah. Like the top down. You're, everyone is supposed to do that. I put the whole thing down. Yeah, they, yeah, they say that's a good idea in case a snake comes out. Okay. All, All right. right. Well, <laughs> thank you for sharing. <laughs> no problem. And you Angela. know what was off the list too? Cheating. I feel like people argue a lot about, um, you know, jealousy, infidelity, and things like that. But maybe a lot of people aren't doing that, Angela. I feel like people argue about that a lot. I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> I do think that. Okay. You know, who was that girl? You liked her picture. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, um, we have a lot going on today on a Friday. When we come back, Jabari Banks is going to be joining us. He plays Will Smith on Bel Air. Mm -hmm. He's really fun, too. He's from Philly. And I know this was a dream, dream, dream role for him. Yes. Uh, for his acting career. So I love to see that's how he's starting it off. We also have Ask Yee coming up. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Hey. Now, 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 now back. Hey, she back at it. Bring it. Bring in the back. Way Up with Angela Yee is on. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Jasmine from the JasmineBrand.com is here mm -hmm. also. Okay, Jasmine from the Jasmine Brand. Uh-oh. And Jabari Banks. Jabari, yes. can we introduce you first? Sorry, before? Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Sheesh. And Jabari Banks is here. You know him as Will mm -hmm. on Bel Air. Mm -hmm. But go ahead and now say what you No, I feel like I feel like I have seen your face somewhere before. I met we you have before. Met, mm -hmm. Right. You had different color hair, I think. Yeah, yeah. What, was it pink? I don't know. It was different. Okay. Yeah, I don't know different. if it was pink. Oh, was you were trying to do the Jasmine brand pink yeah, hair thing? Yeah, but I did have pink hair like last year. <laughs> I did have pink hair. Uh, well, Jabari, first of all, I just want to say congratulations to you. Mm -hmm. A successful series, which is not an easy thing to do. Yeah. Bel Air on Peacock. And you guys have been renewed for a season three. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, season three. That's uh, that's huge. And yeah. so how has life changed for you now? Because I can just imagine that when you go places, everybody knows who you are. Nah, I'm like a little undercover right now because my hair is a little different. Uh, uh, I so recognize you in the hall. No. Yeah, no, but some people are like, oh, do you? Are you that guy from Bel Air? Nah, nah, he doesn't have that. His hair isn't that long, so I, li I like to switch it up. You know, change it up on people. But uh, but it is my life is a lot different. Were you so broke before, or you did okay financially before? I mean, I was broke. My my family's not broke. Okay, you know okay, I mean? like, got gotcha. you. I, I didn't. So really you weren't poor growing up. Okay, got no, it. No, broke no, is harsh. No, like, no, no, I was, I was yeah. broke growing up. Yeah, so I know, no. like, I was rich in many other things. Okay, you know rich in right. love. Yeah, exactly, got it. Exactly. Well, you were, were, you were, you were. How were you raised, like, with your family? Just talk about that a little bit. You know, were they or yeah. any of them in the arts, or what did they think about you, this path that you're going down? No, none, none of them are in the arts. I have four brothers, four mm -hmm. older brothers. So it was all five of us living with my mom, and my dad, and. um you know, we made it happen, um, but, um, you know, I, I grew up playing sports and stuff like that, so I figured that that we was going to be my path. Yeah, <laughs> I figured that that was going to be my path growing up because all my brothers play sports, too, so that was, like, our thing. Mm -hmm. And then in high school, that kind of just left the building, and, and, and I started doing arts. Mm -hmm. And um, then I, it really blossomed in college. I went to the University of the Arts in, in Philly, and, uh, you know, it kind of just blossomed from there. That's where I found my manager, nice. and, uh, and he put me on to my agents, and whoop, whoop. then one thing led to another, and I'm here. So you're the baby of the family. The baby of the family, yeah. How does, so how does that affect you? Because I always wonder, like, uh, you said you're the youngest of how many boys? Four boys. That's uh, five of us. There's yeah. five of us, and you're mm -hmm. the youngest? Yep. First and of all, all that's those, a lot of kids. You yeah, know how much yeah. fighting must have went on in that yeah. house? Oh, yeah. Oh, big fights. A lot yeah. of fights. But Lots of fights. Yeah, but a lot of <laughs> testosterone. But yeah, you know, Ooh, it's good. It's good. A lot of Mom. wrestling. A lot of, like, a I can't breathe. Get off me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got it the worst, too. <laughs> Growing up, actually, I thought I was ugly. I'm not going to lie. I thought I was ugly. you think you're not now? Oh, you got I'm just joking with you. Now I'm you just joking. Like, you broke? I'm just you joking. ugly. I'm joking. You're very cute. Yeah, she's bringing me down to earth. Don't I need, forget I need, it. I need people like her. Uh, <laughs> no, no, so because my brothers were like, yeah, I have like, my eyes are like far apart or whatever, so they used to call me a bug all the time. So, they did? Yeah, but, but I feel like when you do that, like when you kind of grow up in that sort of way, like you don't have to depend on like your looks to get you things. You know yeah. what I mean? So like I, I was never one of those kids that was thought I was like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. oh, look at pretty privilege or whatever like you know what I mean so I, I developed a personality <laughs> you know what I mean and I right. feel like that's been helping me did the girls like years. you though no, no really I mean I was I was I kind of floated around I wasn't never like the like most popular kid but I was kind of cool with everybody because I played sports and stuff like how that, many so. people double back that maybe you try to holler at man like, that hey. is crazy now <laughs> that is craziest I'm not you know lie. I always had kind of lightweight thoughts you was crazy. yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got you. Got to respect it, though. I know you have some other roles coming up too. I saw that you're. Yeah. So tell us about that. 
I'm working on this new project. It's called uh, Bad Genius. Mm -hmm. uh, we start in Vancouver, filming in April, and I'm super excited about that. What's okay. that project about? It's uh, I, I, you know, I don't want to say too is much. Is it based on a true story? No, 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 no. Okay. no. It's but it actually, is a remake. Yes, and it's an okay. adaption from a, from a Thai from 2017. Film. Yeah, okay. and uh, it's, it's it's a thriller heist situation okay. about these two high school seniors and they're cheating the SAT. Did and, you have to audition for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, yeah I'm not, I'm not there yet. Okay. They just, I don't you know, know how it goes. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> they're giving me the call, but uh, soon, soon come. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so, what's dope about the role that you're playing now? First of all, you already love basketball, mm -hmm. and yeah. imagine because I don't think you could have gotten this role if you couldn't play basketball. No, that was a requirement. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were like, send us videos of you hooping. What yeah. were the other requirements? That's it. That's and, it. And because, you gotta play basketball. You know, knows how to play basketball and <laughs> is can act. You know what I mean? That's that's basically it, yeah. Mm. All right, and then in real life, you're also an artist. Yes. And we saw you on Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, yeah, that's my job. When I tell you that went viral, yeah. people were so impressed. Do they give you this song ahead of time? Were you, or is it on the spot? So I wasn't even supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. Fun fact. Um, it was supposed to be... Um, Oh man, rest in peace. It was actually supposed to be uh, takeoff. Oh wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. really? That's yeah. right, cause Quavo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and he he, he missed his flight, and so they called me and they were like, "Do you want to be on?" That's my jam, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, sure, for, for yeah, of course." Mm -hmm. Um, and so they sent me they sent me like a list of things. They were like, "You could either do this, this, this for this segment," and I was mm -hmm. like, "Okay, I'll I'll try the Usher song." Okay. Um, and I practiced it like once before, and I was like, "I don't know how this is gonna go," <laughs> but I went up there and I did. Maybe my you only thing. you only practice it once. Yeah, yeah, you I practiced it, it once. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank everybody you. was like, "Now this is impressive." I thought. I could have done better. Really? Yeah, but it came off good. It came off well. Yeah, I thought I could have done better though. My my presence was. I was a little nervous. Well, you did only practice it once. Just yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, you only practiced it one time. <laughs> yeah, I did. So yeah. you were surprised at the uh, response? Uh -huh. I was. I was. I didn't even think it was gonna be like that. A thing. Yeah. yeah. What were your thoughts on when you first booked Bel Air? Did you think that oh. this was going to be something? Because I saw a lot of negativity about it at first. Mm -hmm. People were like, why are they trying to remake this classic? Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's a lot of pressure when somebody loves a show so much. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you being from Philly growing yeah. up, yeah. you know, Fresh Prince was your was your John. Mm -hmm. Is that what y'all say? <laughs> 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 or is, that like a, is that like an old Philly thing? Or is it, is it I just still? had to no, say it. I'm like sorry. It's it's like like a, everlasting like a, yeah, forever. Exactly, okay. Yeah. Did I say it right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I feel like you didn't. Wow. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta just let it roll off the tongue. Like, can you say it in a sentence? <laughs> like, like, how, how, what you want me to say? Like, <laughs> how, whatever, just so we can get an example. You just want me to say this, John? Like, you know what I mean? There you, you got how, it. Just like, got it. it, it, it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But yeah, so you know, there was a lot of pressure around it in your head because sometimes people could get in their own head. Did you feel like this is gonna be something that's gonna get renewed and that's gonna last? Because it's hard to make a show last and really connect with people and i know the numbers have been going up yeah which is a blessing um i knew that it was going to be special when i read the script the first time um i just knew that it was going to be a feat that i was ready to take on to be able to like sell it to people you know what i mean and, and for people to actually watch it because peacock is like this new yeah streaming platform mm -hmm. what they're doing the first prince of bel-air reboot why right so like these are all the things i was feeling as well when yeah. i first saw the project i was like oh wow like i can't believe they're actually doing this and so i read the script and i was like well this is actually pretty good like if, if it's executed well this could go over really well and so we, we just poured ourselves into it like i like super focused you know what i mean like major focus and and um so much love and uh, we got there every day and we, we just like tackled it. And I think, you know, it came out really well. And uh, yeah, this season is doing is doing numbers too. So it's crazy. I think season three, we're going way up. You know what I mean? Way up. Way up. Oh, yeah. that was clever. That's the show. What? Yeah, That's cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was your biggest fear in terms of the entire thing? Like, was it your delivering on screen? Was it mm. the reaction? Was it the... Yeah. Yeah, it was my first time uh, on screen acting. So like, you know what I mean? I, I, I didn't know really how I was going to you come across you know what i uh -huh. mean and so it was kind of it was kind of scary when, okay. I, when i first when i first started but um you know will was a great resource morgan mm -hmm. cooper was a great resource and um they just reminded me like you're here for a reason all right it's way up with angela yee and jabari banks is here from bel-air we have some more with him when we come back you vibe the way up with angela yee What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee, and we are here, as in we, me, and Jasmine Brand, mm -hmm. with Jabari Banks from Bel Air. He plays the Will Smith character, and he's a character in real life. <laughs> so you said that Bel Air was your first time on screen. So did you do plays and things like that? Yeah, I did theater. I did theater. Okay. I, I was an on stage actor. Um, Tell us some of the roles you played. I played uh, Seaweed and Hairspray. You ever seen that? <laughs> I seen Hairspray, but I don't remember, I don't remember. I don't remember Seaweed. Seaweed is like the black guy. 
the right, black guy, yeah. the, like the yeah. one black guy. Yeah, in the show. I think the one black guy in Hairspray. Got it. <laughs> Got okay. it. No, he's like a main. He's like a main. Person. Yeah, yeah. You never seen the? You seen the movie? Yeah, right? I have. Yeah. Remember he was like running to that. I don't remember that part. <laughs> All right, well. Have you seen Hairspray, Ann? <laughs> I feel like I saw it so long ago. Was it like Ricky... Um, Look, Ricky Lake? Yeah. Was no, she... is that Little Shop of Horrors you think about? Okay, no, that's the no. wrong thing. Ricky oh, Lake? y'all talking about the OG? Oh, yeah. yeah. See, y'all talking about the that's OG That's so long ago. We're so old. I, I know. It was like a new Hairspray that came out okay. like 10 years ago. Sheesh. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay, well. No. Got it. Okay, yeah. so who else did you play? <laughs> Uh, there was a there was a play called um, what was it called? It was like a Green Day play, American Idiot. Okay. And I played uh, the favorite son. That was that was a fun one too. I did that one in college. All right, um, I like that. Yeah. So you kind of knew what you wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. I've always been like focused, and I I kind of knew I, I wanted to tell stories. I love telling stories, whether through music, like visual arts, acting. Yeah. And your your uh, music project is coming out soon too. Oh, not a project, but uh, like a, a couple singles are coming out though. Ooh, yeah, yeah. You look excited when you talk about yeah, that. Yeah, you yeah. You look yeah. nervous, actually. I feel like you think so. You didn't even see my face. You did like that. <laughs> <laughs> she did but body she see you at that. But you actually, you know what's crazy? Like, like being nervous and like being excited. They live in your same place in your they body. They do. So when are we getting these a uh, couple of singles? You know, I would say like May. How do you have time to do all these things? They so got a new movie on deck. Season mm -hmm. three is coming up. You're doing yeah. press. You got music coming out. Yeah. What else do you have going on? Um... <laughs> Nothing else, really. Like, that's I mean, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to make sure we yeah. get everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we got yeah. everything for sure. What about Coco Jones? She's an amazing artist, and you had yeah. the opportunity to work with her. She's Hillary mm -hmm. on Bel Air. Are y'all going to do any music together? Have you talked about Ooh. it? I love singing with Coco. Mm -hmm. We like we sing together on set all the time. You do? Yeah, but we haven't like sat down and been like, let's do something in the studio yet. You need to ask but her. You know, that would be nice. I yeah. think that yeah. and that would be yeah. amazing. Even just even if it was just something that was like just to kind of promo the show. Mm -hmm. Or something fun that could go viral. Yeah. I think people would like to see that. That'd be fire. That'd be fire. Maybe we could set it up. Let's Good idea. It, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but are you happy? Are you feeling like... I think so. This is what I thought it would be? <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. I really am happy. I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. I Like, I can't even complain at all. You know what I mean? Um, you know, and, and there's uh, it's a lot of ups and downs that come with this lifestyle and with the business and stuff. But I'm just... I'm blessed to even be here. Like, you know what I mean? I'm blessed to even be able to tell this story and, mm -hmm. and for it to be received very well and to be doing stuff like this I'm on way up with Angela Yee uh, and Jasmine and like it's like it's he's up, so charming it's he's good it's, charming. you know what I mean cause it's uh because you know what I mean like <laughs> that's because uh, he uh, wasn't cute when he was in, in high school yeah yeah, yeah so I didn't have to lean on that yeah no no but uh you know like two years ago it was, it was way different for me what were you doing two years ago I was sleeping on friends couches trying to make it work I was trying to be here couch, like, like actually doing that so you know it's, it's, it's kind of sounds like Everybody has the same story in that way, or like that's kind of cliche, but yeah, a lot of people can resonate with that because that was, that was my lifestyle, you know. So uh, a lot I put of a lot of work to be here. Yeah, yeah a lot it of sacrifices. It is a lot of work. Yeah. And can you text like Will Smith just to be like, hey, you know, what do you think about this? Or did you check out this? Do y'all like talk? Does he hit you up and like, I just watched the episode. It was yeah. that's amazing, right? Oh, you're there. famous. No, no, you're that's famous, famous, no. You yeah. know, it's crazy. Something, some, something crazy happened. Like I was so mad about it. So I was on my way to London, and and I and I get a Facetime from Will. But I'm I'm on the plane, so I can't well, answer it. You're not supposed it. to. Yeah. I can't answer. <laughs> well, you look like you like you're not no, supposed to. No, the door is closed. No, close. exactly. I can't <laughs> answer it. So I'm like, yo, I text him like, yo, what's up? He's like, yo, I'm with Travis Scott right now in Saudi, and he's raving about the show. Oh. And like, he called me, and I was like, oh, this is crazy. Cause I wish I could answer that. Like, you I, I just love did Travis it. Scott. My phone, like, I could I couldn't answer. Like, I couldn't. Like if the service wouldn't go through. Oh, it wouldn't go yeah. through. You tried. You tried. Yeah, no, I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They'd be like, "Sir, please go, <laughs> sir," mad. and they would stop the plane and I kick you mad. right off. I was mad. Yeah, no, I bet. Mad. That's dope, though. Yeah. And then, but you know what's even doper? Now Travis Scott thinks you sent Will Smith to voicemail. <laughs> that is dope. That's yeah, how... <laughs> true. I didn't think about that. That's Who, so... Who's the most um, famous person that you've met thus far? Because I'm, oh, yeah. I'm sure you lot met a lot. Will Smith. Of... Yeah, I think yeah, Will Smith. Smith. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> That'll do it. That'll do it. Yeah. All right, well, let's yeah, put it in the atmosphere. I saw you want to do Spider-Man. Hopefully, they come mm -hmm. knocking on the door for That'd you. Nice, yeah. That would be really nice. I can see yeah. that, right? You can see it. Mm -hmm. And congratulations on everything. You said you leave to Vancouver when? Beginning of May. Beginning of May to start filming. Right? And you yeah. got two singles coming out in May. Yeah, exactly. All so right. May's going to be a good month. All right, yeah. well, booked and busy well, Jabari. Thank you so much for coming through. It was a pleasure to have you. Wow, thank you for having me. Yeah. Appreciate it. And we have Ask Ye when we come back. Any question you have, we are here to help. 800-292-5150. Call us up and let us know what you need some support with. It's Way Up with Angela Ye. Everybody exits. Whether it's relationship or career advice, Angela's dropping facts. So you should know. You should know. This is Ask Ye.
What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee and Jasmine Brand is here with me and it's time for Ask Yee. 800-292-5150 is the number for you guys to call up whenever you have a question so we can help you out. Hey, Shamai, what's your question for Ask Yee? Hi, my question is, um, I'm a I'm a student, I'm a freshman at North Carolina Central University and I'm in um, communication, studying communication. Okay. What's your, um, what's your, uh, you know, advice for the upcoming, you know, people in media? Well, a few different things. Are you a good writer? Uh, I'm okay. I'm a better talker than a writer. <laughs> well, I, I think you need a radio show. You need to be able to do both, though, because I find that especially okay. when I first got started, I had to post a lot of my own stories and send them out to people to try to get them uh, written up. Mm -hmm. So to okay. be able to communicate, it's great to be able to talk on the radio and talk, but it's also important to be able to write well. So I would focus on that, too, especially when you're pitching yourself for things. If you meet somebody okay. and you want to send an email out or maybe do a written recap of what it is that you're showing is about or what you're expressing then it's good to be able to have that ability um, also as much experience as you can get if what you want to do is is it radio is it TV or uh, well I, I do have a lot of experience already I have done like I have done a talk show in high school and mm -hmm. now I have my own radio show only as a freshman my, my last semester my show was number one on the Yay. student network nice congratulations so, so I'm trying. Thank you so much. So I'm just trying, you know, get as much experience as I can. Mm -hmm. I applied to internships already uh, for iHeartRadio also. So I'm just trying to get my foot into the door into different things. But yeah. I, my main goal is to be either on radio or television. Okay. That's my ultimate goal. Yeah, and I think you already have gotten some of the first steps. Like, you sound comfortable, mm -hmm. and like you said, you've been doing this. You have the number one radio show because, and I learned this early on, and it's definitely true. The more airtime that you can get and what it is that you want to do, the more comfortable you'll be <clears throat> and the more polished you'll be when that opportunity comes. Do you know how to run your own boards and everything? Yeah, I have gotten better, but for my first time being on radio, I have done uh, much, much better on the boards. But I'm learning. I'm still learning. And that's a great skill to have, too, because some places you might go to and if you have the opportunity, one of the things they want to know is, do you know how to run your own board? Right. And so I just feel like those okay. technical skills of knowing how to run your own board, also knowing how to write well sometimes because look right now, this is a brand new show way up with Angela Yee so there's a lot of things that we're having to do ourselves because we don't have a full team right. and so if you can yeah. be as self-sufficient as possible that's going to help I also recommend you put together an amazing reel because you might need that so that okay. whenever you meet somebody that you feel like oh I, I can send this out right away let me get your email because a lot of times you can't hand somebody something right. it's good to be able to follow what about up a portfolio I have a portfolio is that good too yeah, that's great. Whatever it is that you okay. can send somebody where they need to hear you, mm -hmm. where they need to be able to see you because you, you're interested in doing television too. Like a nice, yeah. quick, you know, one and a half minute something. So yeah. it's it's enough for them to get the idea of what it is that you do. But it's not so long because a lot of people aren't going to sit through the whole thing, but it'll be intriguing enough for, for you okay. to for them to want you to come back. And also to be really creative in how you present yourself. Okay. But, you know, I feel good Thank about it. So Shamai, what's um, your radio yeah. show? My, sh my show is called What's Hot with Shamai Cook. And uh, my Instagram is Shamai Cook TV. S-H-I-M-E-I-C-O-O-K-T-V. -O -O okay. You can follow me there and look into the show there. It's available on all podcast platforms. All right, Shamai. The link is in my bio. Shamai Cook TV. Everybody, make sure y'all pay attention okay. and go look. If anybody's looking for some personalities or, you know, somebody who you can see he's eager to get his foot in the door, Shamai Cook TV. Thank you so much for calling. Thank you. Thank you so much, Angela and Jasmine. Thank you. I love your show. Thank you. Yes, that was Ask Ye. 800-292-5150 is the number. You can also call and leave an Ask Ye, and we'll answer that as well. And leave any message, 800-292-5150, because guess what? At the end of the show, we have last words, and that's coming up now, where you guys get to have the last word. Pick up the phone. Tap in. Tap in and get your voice heard. What the word is. Here's the last word on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm here. Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is here. This has been a great show, Angela. Yeah, we're having fun. This is actually like this coming to Detroit is the first time we've done the show out of the studio. Yeah. How do you feel? Good. Okay. I enjoy it. All right. I'm, we back on the road, baby. Mm -hmm. We back outside. This show is very fast paced. It's a little different than anything I've had to do before. So we're like super on point. I went to go to the bathroom. <laughs> And as soon as I go for the first time to go, you know... Go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Release my bladder. Mm -hmm. Angela, where are you? I'm like, oh my gosh. Can I go to the bathroom? 
But um, thank you guys for joining us. We do appreciate all of the support that we have been getting so far on Way Up with Angela Yee, mm -hmm. a nationally syndicated show. Mm -hmm. Say it with your chest. Say it with your chest, Angela. It's a Friday. It's the last day of Women's History Month. Also want to shout out to Royce the Five Nine since we are in the D. Okay. Uh, he has a project that's out today also, um, The Heaven Experience. Okay. It's an EP. He also has launched his whole virtual world thing in partnership with Passage. Oh, nice. It's a metaverse and NFT marketplace and blog. So you have to buy the Heaven Experience Pass and then you can participate. It's going to give exclusive opportunities to connect with Royce throughout the year. Okay. Um, and he said, I've been searching for a better way to connect with my community for a while, but existing platforms haven't lived up to my expectations. Mm. Pass just delivers on all fronts. So you guys make sure you get that Heaven Experience. It's an EP, uh, six songs. Yeah, I was just looking at the track list. Okay. Grown ass man. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank y'all so much again. Um, thank you to Jabari Banks for joining us today. Yes. You know, I'd be watching Bel Air every week. So Yeah, that's one of your favorite shows, actually. Yeah, I do enjoy it. I like it. Yeah. I like I like the you know, it's already been renewed for season three. So clearly it's a hit. They doing something right over there. Mm-hmm. And um thank you, Jasmine. No problem. Thanks for having me. This has been a, a great time. Let's see if you stay up past nine o'clock tonight, baby girl. Well, you know, let's see. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys, and um, right now it's time for the last word. That's where y'all call in and leave your messages, 800-292-5150. It's way up. Good morning, this is Emily C. Say. I also want to shine the light on both of my sisters, Eden Tecla, and um, my little sister, Eleni Wurgesalasa. And so both of them has done everything they can to help me with my twins. And I just want to say happy Women's History Month. To all the women in the whole world, the whole world, not just the United States. I would like to shine the light on you too, Angela. You are such a perfect human. And thank you for all the support that you've been supporting us in every way possible. And the whole, for the, the black community, our whole entire community, women in general, you're just the best woman on earth. Hi, Yee. I would like to shine a light on my mom and my girlfriend. My mom raised me and my brother up from nothing and she did it all on her back. I remember those days we used to struggle and we ain't have nothing to eat and she still took care of us and I feel like at times she don't think we appreciate her so I had to call in a day to shine a light on her and I would love to shine a light on my girlfriend because I've been going through a real tough time. I've been having a medical issue but she's been there every step of the way supporting me, making sure I do what I need to do, been riding me in the positive way so that I can become the man that I'm supposed to be. So I love to shine a light on my mom and my girlfriend. I love you, mom. Thank you for everything you've done, and I love you too. Way up with Angela Yee.